Today on Optimum Insight, we're going to look into sleep optimization, tackling questions like how much sleep should one get and how can one improve their sleep quality. So why is sleep important and why sleep at all? Well, the reasons for the importance of sleep are similar but do vary slightly between age groups. People generally underestimate the amount they need, but here are some guidelines. First, for babies, when they are newborn, their sleep may need to be as high as 17 hours, going down to around 13 hours at one years of age. Toddlers, on the other hand, need only around 10 to 14 hours. So obviously clearly, babies and toddlers do need a lot more sleep than most. And it's actually quite obvious why, as they obviously need more sleep in order to support their rapid mental and physical development. Now, looking at children and teens, they will obviously need more sleep than young adults and adults, as we can see on this table. And this is for exactly the same reasons. Though we can see that the average sleep hours needed actually does slowly decrease as they increase in age, um, with the youngest children needing up to 12 hours and teenagers needing as little as 8 hours. And finally, we can see that young adults and adults only need around 7 to 9 hours. Now yes, you may be wondering that there are people who say they only need to sleep for around 6 hours, but these super sleepers that require less sleep than everyone else are actually rare. So I'm sorry to say, but you're probably not one of them. So now that you know how many hours you're likely to need, let's focus on why you need those years. The three main categorical impacts of sleep deprivation are on your health, cognitive functionalities, and physical function. So first, there's health. A lack of sleep can lead to some really serious health conditions, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, loss of libido, hypertension, depression, heart attack, and stroke. The second largest impact of sleep deprivation is on your cognitive function. A lack of sleep has been linked to cognitive issues ranging from simply having trouble with thinking and concentration to your attention capacity to severely impacting both your short and long-term memory, so your working memory. Also, remember that when you sleep, memories are reactivated, allowing the connections between brain cells to be strengthened and information to be transferred from the short to long-term memory. Thus, sleep is vital for memory consolidation. As well as this, your reaction times and creativity will be severely dulled. So if you have a test, a flight, or need to be innovative at work, you need to prioritize getting your recommended hours of sleep. Finally, there's physical function. As I already mentioned, your reaction times, focus, and health will not be optimum. And so I think it's already clear how badly, say, an athlete's performance, for instance, would be impacted by a lack of sleep. The University of California study looked at the relationship between sleep and injury rates during athletic competitions. They found that injury rates in youth athletes increased during games that followed a night of sleep fewer than six hours. So to further emphasize, sleep hours were stronger predictors of injuries than hours of practice. So what this means is that an extra hour of practice may not be worth sleeping five hours rather than six and so one must judge the trade-off much more carefully okay now that you know exactly what your optimum sleep hours are and why you need them remember to like and subscribe to optimum insight and see you next time just kidding we all know that even though i've explained the importance of sleep and how much sleep you need it's pretty likely that you're not gonna sleep more so we're simply going to look at something else we're going to look at how to optimize the sleep hours that you do manage to get which i think will be much more beneficial to those of you watching this video so there are two things i want to go over when looking at the quality of sleep first is when you should sleep and second is the quality of that sleep so firstly looking at when you should sleep this depends on what type of sleeper you are. What do I mean by this? Well, there are four chronotypes when it comes to sleep. 
And these can help explain why some people are naturally early birds and others are night owls. So we all have a biological clock that governs the rhythm of our day, though this is different for each of these four chronotypes. So learning your chronotype will give you much better information as to how you can optimize your sleep time and this will allow you to get better sleep and with better sleep you will then have a better and more productive day. So to go straight to the point, there are four chronotypes. These are lions, dolphins, wolves and bears. You can of course take a quiz very easily to find your chronotype and this will that will be quite surely a more reliable way of determining your chronotype but for those of you who are a bit tight, tight on um, time i'll give you some quick clues to help you find your chronotype okay if you're a regular alarm snoozer and feel tired by late evening you're likely a bear if you're a light sleeper and wake early though still feel restless you're likely a dolphin if you're energetic in the morning but then feel sleepy by mid-afternoon, you're likely a lion. If you're someone who regularly sleeps after midnight and struggles to function in the morning, then you're a wolf. So now that you know your chronotype, we'll look at bears first, since they consist of roughly half of the world's population. The ideal wake-up time for a bear is 7am, so you should consider adapting an early routine if you're a bear. Bears should eat a high protein breakfast as soon as they wake up, so say around 7.30 a.m. However, bears may feel tempted to ha try um, high carb foods, uh, foods in the morning. Um, the only downside with this is that it can actually lower your cholesterol levels, and these are important if you want to remain active in the day. Now looking at dolphins, whom are more prone to restless sleep and insomnia. The ideal routine for dolphins will consist of exercise first thing in the morning. Thereafter, um, having a high protein breakfast afterwards, um, similar to bears. Dolphins energy levels will rise in the afternoons and this is actually the more ideal time than say in the mornings for dolphins to do tasks that may require deep concentration. Now lions have their highest energy levels in the mornings. Thereafter, their energy levels then take a dive as the day goes on. Mid-morning is the best time for lions to carry out strategic decisions. And lions tend to then crash energy-wise an hour or two post-lunch. And hence it's better for lions to delay their eating to a later time rather than an earlier time. Eating outside or walking outside during breaks from work can help you feel more alert due to the exposure to sunlight. If you're a lion. As for exercise, lions should do exercise around 5 p.m. and then finally they should go to sleep around 10 p.m. The final chronotype are the wolves. Wolves are the night owls that struggle with the early 9 a.m. start. Wolves should ideally have breakfast around 8 a.m. before then doing some exercise outside and delaying any coffee use until 11 a.m. Wolves are thought to hit their mental peak later in the day, so they should use the morning for planning and gathering their thoughts. An ideal time for dinner would be at 8 p.m. And as for alcohol, having that before dinner is important as having it later can otherwise then prevent wolves from sleeping well. Wolves will tend to sleep around midnight. Okay, now you have a good idea of when you should sleep, for how long and how you should maybe structure your, uh, your day around that, depending on your chronotype. So of course this is all good, but what is actually more important than all of this stuff is your quality of sleep. Because you can do what I said above, word for word, but if you have a shit sleep quality, you're going to feel like shit the whole day, full stop. Yes. So getting 6 hours of quality sleep can be better than getting 8 hours of low quality sleep. This is hence why some people may be able to cope with getting 6 or fewer hours of sleep. The problem however is that your probability, you're probably getting disturbed in your sleep or being affected by other factors that may be lowering your average sleep quality 
and this may be happening without you even knowing it. For instance, traffic noise or other forms of nocturnal noises can lead to you having more shallow and fragmented sleep rather than deep sleep, leading to worse sleep quality. It doesn't matter that you don't notice these noises when you're sleeping because studies show that they do still impact your sleep quality. So one way to get around this is to track your sleep quality with devices and identify whether you are deficient in any particular forms or stages of the sleep cycle. And the other thing you can also do is take precautions to ensure that you get the best quality sleep possible. One way you can do this may be to fix your routine such as to avoid certain noises that you know may occur at certain times and also avoid other factors such as say sunlight in the morning that could also be affecting your sleep quality. And as for the noise, earbuds are a simple solution uh, that can also help. Um, going back to the sunlight, light is also a very large factor that you need to take into account. Um, as even um, light from the sun um, can really negatively influence your internal clock and sleep patterns. And then something like a face mask that can um, help prevent this light from affecting you, or say even just having good blinds is a, is a good solution that you should look into using if you haven't got them already. Now, before going into the other factors, I think it would be helpful for you to better understand the different stages of sleep because all sleep is not the same. When it comes to sleep, sleepers will pass through four stages. One, two, and three will make up non-REM sleep Stage four makes up REM sleep. REM sleep is also known as rapid eye movement sleep. So these four stages act as a cycle um, of length around 100 minutes on average, moving from stage one to REM and then beginning with stage one again. And each of these stages lasts between five to 15 minutes. And uh, of the non-REM sleep stages one and two are known as light sleep and stage three is known as deep sleep so again the sleep cycle can thus be put into three categories light sleep consisting of stages one and two deep sleep consisting of stage three and REM sleep also known as stage four and of this we know that light and deep sleep both make up non-REM sleep so now stage three also known as deep sleep is very important because it's the most restorative sleep stage. So say if a person is suffering from sleep deprivation, they will experience a very long deep sleep in their sleep cycles. And so it is for this reason that when using a productivity hack, such as nap taking during the day, you need to make sure that your naps are limited to around 20 minutes, because if you nap too long, you may end up falling into deep sleep, stage three sleep. So this will make it more difficult for you to then fall asleep say at night because this kind of um, deep sleep during a nap will actually reduce your sleep debt. And so you'll need to sleep when actual time to sleep in the night comes. Furthermore, sleeping for over an hour can lead to REM sleep. Still, this is not good because it will mean that you will wake up muzzy. So napping for less than 20 minutes will ensure that you do not go into the deep sleep states and hence will mean that you'll still be able to fall asleep at night. And so this will still give you the benefits of say stage two, um, stage two sleep, such as uh, memory consolidation and synaptic pruning. Um, as when it comes to using power naps, the optimum time I would recommend for them would be 15 to 20 minutes. Any less wouldn't provide, say, adequate mental benefits, and too much would lead you to feeling confused rather than refreshed. Now here are some things to avoid that may affect your sleep cycle. First, there is caffeine. Now, consuming caffeine in the evening will disrupt your sleep. How? Well, caffeine can delay the timing of your body clock. This will make it harder for you to fall asleep and so reduce your total sleep hours. Also, caffeine will reduce the amount of deep sleep you get. And as I just explained, deep sleep is vital for recovery and growth of the body. Now remember that caffeine has a half-life of three to five hours. The half-life 
is the time it takes for your body to eliminate half of the drug. Thus, a good recommendation would be not to consume coffee less than seven hours before going to sleep. The second thing to avoid is smoking, as smokers are more likely to develop insomnia. Smoking also changes your circadian rhythm, further worsening sleep quality. So if you do smoke, make sure that it's at least a few hours before you go to sleep. The final thing to avoid is alcohol. Now yes, some would say that alcohol can help you sleep faster, and this is true. But as I stressed earlier, quality is more vital than quantity. So you may go to sleep faster, but the quality of your sleep will greatly suffer. For instance, alcohol reduces REM sleep. And so the more you drink before bed, the worse these effects on REM sleep are. Though for those of you who think sleepwalking would be cool, alcohol will increase this likelihood along with the unwanted consequence of a worse memory. This worse memory is due to REM sleep's mentally restorative effects of which you are obviously now getting less of and uh, lower quality of due to the consumption of alcohol. Okay, that's everything I wanted to cover for this topic. Now, you should have a good idea of how to optimize your sleep. From this video, you should now know how much sleep you should get based on your age, your sleep chronotype, and how to maximize the quality of your sleep. I recommend now using what you've learnt in this video to help you identify possible issues with your sleep that you can then implement against, precautions against. I hope this video gave you some optimum insight into how to optimize the sleep component of your life and in future videos I will continue to help you optimize other parts of your life. Thanks for watching and as this is a new channel I would appreciate any subs, likes and comments. See you soon with my next video.